Scientists think that marine life may be able to point investigators in the direction of the wreckage of Malaysia Airlines flight MH370, which vanished in March 2014 and became one of Malaysia's deadliest aviation incidents. In the still unsolved aviation mystery, all 239 aboard were assumed dead. On March 8, 2014, at 12.42 a.m. Kuala Lumpur International Airport saw the departure of flight MH370, which was headed for Beijing. Its last transmission to air traffic control was Good Night, Malaysian 370 at 1.19 a.m. over the South China Sea. At 2.22 a.m. it was last seen on a military radar. Neither the cockpit nor the passengers' cell phones issued a distress signal. 153 of the 239 passengers were from China, 38 were from Malaysia, and the remaining individuals were from Indonesia, Australia, India, France, the United States, Iran, Ukraine, Canada, New Zealand, the Netherlands, Russia, Taiwan, and Australia. There were five kids, ten flight attendants, and two pilots on board. One of the biggest surface and underwater hunts in aviation history was the search for MH370. Prior to being suspended almost three years later, an underwater search led by Australia that covered 120,000 square kilometers was estimated to have cost about $202 million. The plane is thought to have crashed somewhere in the southern Indian Ocean, according to information from the British commercial satellite company in Marsat and the Air Accidents Investigation Branch of Great Britain. Around 2,500 kilometers southwest of Perth, underwater search operations lasted for almost three years. In January 2017, the search in the choppy waters of the vast Indian Ocean was abandoned. But the mystery that remained unsolved may have a chance to be solved nearly a decade later, after MH370's disappearance. According to a recent study, barnacles discovered on a piece of airplane wreckage may hold the key to learning what happened to MH370. In the subphylum Crustacea, the subclass Cirripedia includes barnacles, a type of arthropod related to crabs and lobsters. The new temperature and chemistry tools are among the most accurate yet for using shell chemistry to retrace the unknown paths of crash debris, ocean plastics, dead bodies, and other flotsam carrying lepers anatifera, also known as a goose, goose neck, or stocked bonacles. They were published today in the American Geophysical Union journal AGU Advances. Gregory Herbert, a marine ecologist at the University of South Florida, started investigating the MH370 mystery in the summer of 2015 after learning that a flaperon from the missing plane had washed up on a beach in Reunion, covered in barnacles. The chemistry of barnacle shell layers is like a forensic recorder for drifting debris, Herbert says. In the eight years that have passed, Herbert has assembled a global team to create techniques for monitoring the ocean temperatures the barnacles passed through as well as statistical formulas that, in theory, could turn that temperature history into a drift pathway that leads back to the crash, he says. The chemistry of the barnacles' shells varies daily as a result of daily variations in water temperature. This information can then be used to determine the crustacean's location on any given day. The issue, according to Griffin, who was not involved in the research, was that no one really knew how to decode the clues that were encoded in the barnacles' shells. That's what this group has done. They've given us the methods to decode the data that's there stored in barnacle shells. Stocked barnacles, which are found in temperate and tropical seas all over the world, start out as free-swimming larvae that travel on ocean currents until they land frequently in large numbers on driftwood, a ship's hull, or other floating objects. Lepers secrete one of nature's most potent adhesives, which they use to cement themselves at the base of their flexible stalk. They construct their wing-shaped shells layer by layer as they grow, using calcium carbonate and other minerals from the nearby seawater. Each new layer has traces of temperature, oxygen ratios, and other conditions in the water where it was formed, as well as slightly different chemical markers. Sclerochronology, the study of those layers, is the shell version of tree-ring science. Imagine a thick book where the animal has added pages one by one as it grows, says lead author Nasser al Khatan a geochemistry professor at Kuwait University. Scientists can reconstruct the chemical composition of each page each thin calcite layer and produce a chemical log of the seawater the animal traveled through while constructing its shell. 
when the Flaperon's discovery made international headlines, Al Catton was conducting research for his PhD. In Herbert's Tampa Marine Science Lab, while examining oxygen isotopes in mollusk shells. Multiple generations of stalked bonnacles were visible in pictures and video footage attached to the wingpiece, a retractable surface that aids in takeoff and landing control. The largest bonnacles appeared to Herbert to have been growing for more than a year, which suggests that they may have boarded the jetliner around the time it disappeared in March 2014. The search area could be reduced by an order of magnitude by being more specific about the sea surface temperatures and the times the bonnacles drifted on the flaperon. Oceanographers have temperature histories from drift buoys that have been satellite tracked throughout the world's oceans, and these histories show a distinct change in temperature along the seventh arc search corridor, which is where the plane is thought to have run out of fuel. David Griffin, a senior government oceanographer from Australia who has worked on the search for the missing jetliner since it disappeared over the Indian Ocean in March 2014 with 239 people on board, called the research an important step towards possibly satisfying Malaysia's requirement for credible new evidence to restart the search. But things weren't destined to go smoothly for this team of scientists. Following the Flaperon's discovery, there was a flurry of science news articles about the Bonacles, with speculation that the hitchhikers would soon aid in focusing the search. Griffin claims that's what the detectives hoped as well. However, the science of barnacle sclerochronology is extremely obscure. Additionally, access to the flaperon and its crustacean clues was restricted by French authorities, who are in charge of reunion as a territory. Herbert was quoted by media outlets as saying, the debris was covered in barnacles, and as soon as I saw that, I immediately began sending emails to the search investigators because I knew the geochemistry of their shells could provide clues to the crash location. We've demonstrated with this study that this method can be applied to a barnacle that colonized the debris shortly after the crash to reconstruct a complete drift path back to the crash origin," he said. Unfortunately, the largest and oldest barnacles have not yet been made available for research. In the year following the discovery of the Flaperon, the French published two scientific reports on the Bonacles. Dr. Herbert exclaims, until the French change their minds, no one can work on the larger Bonacles. But our publication lays a clear pathway for what needs to be done and why it should succeed. The larger, older Bonacles on the Flaperon that may have colonized close to the crash date were confirmed by the expert report by marine scientist Joseph Pupin, which established the species, size range, and growth curve. Researchers Dominique Blamart and Frank Bassinet examined isotopes from some of the actual bonacles in an unpublished report, providing Herbert and Al Catton with information to model a portion of the Flaperon's drift. NASA Al Catton stated, Knowing the tragic story behind the mystery motivated everyone involved in this project to get the data and have this work published. Did this catch your interest? Please subscribe to Weather Collapse if you want to know more and be updated on the latest news about natural calamities or disasters happening all over the world, and don't forget to like today's video. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.